Ladies and gentlemen, please notice that exits are conveniently located at the front and rear of this auditorium. When leaving the theater, we suggest that the exit at the front of the auditorium will allow you easier access to the parking areas. Thank you. Season five. Begin! Nice. The season of the audience is going to be a good one. Because oh, this is not yeah. a forgotten gem. Today we are doing Mike Field's favorite movie. No, that's incorrect. How do you let some guy talk to you like that? That's, yeah, you never once did I smile. Never once did I laugh. While I watched this movie with my mouth agape, I could actually feel my soul leave my body. Hello, I'm Mike Butler. And I'm Mike Field. And you're listening to the Forgotten Cinema Podcast. As you may already know, each episode we highlight a film that, for a variety of reasons, was forgotten by audiences. Whether it's because a more popular movie was released at the same time, or the movie simply didn't catch on with an audience in its initial run. But this season, we're not picking the movies. You, the audience, have selected our films. We're going to discuss what we love, like, or maybe don't like about your movie, but we thank you for sharing your passion for the film. And as always, we recommend that everyone revisits the movie we're talking about this week. You never know. You could discover your own forgotten gem. If you enjoy our podcast, please let everyone know by rating, reviewing, and subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to this podcast. So, is, oh, go ahead. Without further ado, it is the season finale. It is the season finale. Season five. Will the, mics, will the mics make it to season six? I don't know. <laughs> will Butler's rash clear up? It won't. <laughs> Doctor said I had to throw cream on it for at least another six. I don't months. know if you understand the idea of a cliffhanger here, Butler, but you can't tell people what's going to happen. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Just as fast as it began, as fast as it it will end. Season five is ending. This is our final episode. Uh, Thank you to everyone that suggested films, whether we liked them or didn't. Uh, it is still um, awesome that you guys participated. Um, everyone has an opinion. Everyone's right. Everyone's wrong. So don't worry about that. And without further ado, let's kick this off with our final movie suggested to us by Joey DiCarlo from the So Wizard podcast. You can find him on Instagram and Twitter, and I believe on Facebook as well. Yes. He has suggested Ready to Rumble, the 2000 comedy slash buddy film, as it says in front of me here. Yeah. But before we get into what it's about and who's in it and all that good stuff. Why don't we let let Mr. DiCarlo tell us in his own words why he chose this movie and I don't know why he thinks it's forgotten. Take it away. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Joey from the So Wizard Podcast. Just wanted to send a shout out and let you know that I have brought you this movie this week, Ready to Rumble, starring David Arquette, also featuring the media debut of John Cena. It's a year 2000 comedy quote-unquote movie uh starring the world of wrestling uh, i love this movie it's hilarious and terrible it also is forgotten by the majority of the public for one it was a box office bomb i don't think anyone's seen it for two the wwe which now owns wcw as featured in the movie really doesn't like to acknowledge that it exists and for three it's definitely not forgotten by wrestling fans as it was the catalyst for one of the worst storylines in the history of wrestling as David Arquette himself won the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. This was towards the end of WCW, and it was one of the storylines that contributed to the loss of their fans, which ended up with them being bought out by the WWE and then disbanded. So this movie is in a way, indirectly responsible for the end of the entire World Championship Wrestling Federation. And it's actually a fun movie. I like it. It's goofy. It's stupid. And it has wrestling in it. So, you know, as a wrestling movie, it's definitely better than No Holds Barred. And I think it's fun. I wish more people would check it out. But it is definitely a forgotten gem. Great stuff. Fantastic. As always, with everyone's suge- with everyone's. Uh, input we always think they're it's great stuff we always we always disagree and agree on both counts even though we don't know what they've said but that's our little secret Shh. <laughs> i'll never tell all right let's get into ready to rumble well you know now mean gene what i'm gonna tell you here is that's all i got my voice hurts already <laughs> and i and i grabbed the mic so that's gonna sound great on yeah the, come on brother <laughs> All right, so Ready to Rumble is about Gordy Boggs and Sean Dawkins, who are best friends, and they operate a sewage truck. I'll get into that. 
as they idolized pro wrestler Jimmy King, played by Oliver Platt. Uh, after Diamond Dallas Page, I love this in, in, in the synopsis, it says, after Diamond Dallas Page, and then the parentheses list, who plays Diamond Dallas Page? Yeah. It goes, Diamond Dallas Page. No, <laughs> no, no shit. Dethrones their hero. Gordy and Sean embark on a mission to help the king get his title back. When they finally track him down, however, they discover that King is not too keen on recapturing his warmer glory. Can the boys find a way to motivate the fated champ? Eh, that's a that's an okay synopsis, I guess. So Ready to Rumble uh, came out on April 7th, 2000. The Yachts. It was a Friday. Has a runtime of 107 minutes. Rated PG-13. Production budget of $24 million. It's opening weekend. It did, Butler, guess. It did 12 point. Th- no, not opening oh, weekend. 5.5 5 5 million. Yes, yes. We round down here. $5 million. <laughs> what Mr. I like Butler- to give him the point. I like uh, to give him that 10th. <laughs> <laughs> what Butler was referring to was its domestic and worldwide gross of 12 million. Didn't obviously oh, didn't. Worldwide. Domestic was 12.3. Worldwide, 12.4. Wow. Look at that. $100,000. Whopping 100, 100K <laughs> overseas. Nice job. Nice job. <laughs> I round down. <laughs> Uh, we got three production companies here. Outlaw Productions, Bel Air Entertainment, and Tolan Robbins Productions, distributed by Warner Brothers. So that same week, which was April 7th, you had it going up against Rules of Engagement, the Sam Jackson movie. And who else was in that? I totally forgot. Is Spacey in that? Is it? No. Is it just, Sam Jackson and someone else? Some, someone else. Oh, Not man. Travolta. That's basic. I swear we just brought it up on another podcast episode. Not Rules of Engagement? Too. I think so. That's it's what we were talking about. Somebody. It. Yeah. Darn it. Well, someone will text me. <laughs> Speaking of that, I was, my friend was listening to our Frighteners podcast. And I guess it, I must, we talked about Courage Under Fire. Okay. And I talked about Matt Damon. He got so thin that he, and I must have said he, something got affected like wrong internally because he texted me. He's like, his kidneys. It was his kidneys. I'm like, I don't remember what we said, man. <laughs> I'm wrong half the time. I am, I am, yes, we are wrong on this podcast multiple times. So feel free to text us if you know. Oh. What? You give out the facts. I'm never wrong. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> so well, you had Rules of Engagement. You had Return to Me, which is a David Duchovny mini driver uh, romantic drama. I like that movie. Did you ever see that? So Duchovny's wife dies and in the beginning. And then her heart is, is given to mini driver. And then he they fall in love. And it's supposed to be like he's falling in love with her heart kind of thing. You know, I really, I, I know that plot. It's so a good. I, I might have seen that movie. I just it's a good it, movie. It's a really good movie. Bonnie Hunt uh, is in that. I think she directed it. I might be wrong there, but but that's a really good movie. John uh, John Belushi's in that too, or Jim Belushi? Excuse me, Jim Belushi. John Belushi came back. <laughs> he came back. Yeah, just for this movie. <laughs> it also came up against Black and White, which is the James Toback movie. It's indie. It's like a musical. It's on the streets of Harlem. Uh, I think that was no, that was a wide release. Okay, so the week before the thirty first of March, you had the Road to El Dorado, the Kevin Klein animated movie the skulls did you see the skulls it's about the this? skull and bones yeah group? yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. and then high fidelity a lot of people like high fidelity i don't mind it i think it's okay but i not i'm like in I, love with it i hear the new show based on is pretty good too i have a real difficult time with shows that are based on movies like why like snowpiercer like i the snowpiercer movie is really good i don't want to watch a whole show of that i don't need to I, what, what do i need to watch a whole show of that for yeah i'll probably check out the show it's like your battle star galactic you'll check out the show you've got 20 shows you have yeah, to check out you're I'll not gonna it, check I'll out it in my back burner yeah high and, fidelity's yeah. got zoe kravitz in it you never so what? Yeah, like You're never gonna see anything. I'm never gonna see. Yeah, it. yeah. You don't watch anything. Make it forgotten cinema. That no, no. Forgotten cinema TV show. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> I, don't got, I don't got time for that. <laughs> uh, on April 14th, which is the week after this movie came out, you had 28 Days with Sandra Bullock, not to be confused with 28 Days Later, Keeping the Faith with Ben Stiller and Ed Norton, Jenna Elfman. They're like a priest and the rabbi. I've yeah, I've seen most of these. Where the money is the Paul Newman movie. Ah, where he's he's a bank robber who is in a nursing home, but Linda Fiorentino is his nurse. I've seen that. Yep. that. Okay, and then American Psycho. You've obviously seen American Psycho. Well, who's in that? Oh, <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> Huey Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, on the twenty first, you had U five seven one Gossip, Love and Basketball, and Croupier, which I put on the list. It's a Clive Owen movie. You sh- you might like that. Croupier, Croupier. I remember do. that Croupier. I do like Clive Owen. So this movie, as we're talking about, Ready to Rumble, was directed by Brian Robbins. You may know Brian Robbins as Eric from Head of the Class in the 80s. He's also directed Varsity Blues, Throw That Fucking Pigskin, uh, The Perfect Score, and Norbit. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, written by Stephen Brill. Uh, Mr. Brill has written the Mighty Ducks trilogy, Little Nicky, which he also directed, and he directed Heavyweights as well as writing it. I like all those except for Little Nicky. Really? You like all the Mighty Ducks movies? All of them? All of them? The yeah. first one's great. 
The second one's okay. All of them? Come on. Come on. Kids movies, man. <laughs> <laughs> Cinematography by Clark Mathis. Uh, he's worked on Happy Endings, Rocky Balboa, and the Royals TV show. Composer George S. Clinton, not to be confused with George Clinton from Parliament and Funkadelic. <laughs> <laughs> George S. Clinton has done Mortal Kombat 1 and 2. Remember, brother, I think we did Mortal Kombat a long time ago. I think we did with our good friend Russell Lyman. Don't pu- don't give him a free plug. I'm sorry. Does he give us free plugs? No. He did plug Resident Evil. Did he? Oh, All right. I uh, Resident apologies. Resident. Apologies. There has been some groundswell to do for us to do more Mortal Kombat Annihilation. And as I've said before, that will not be pretty. Uh, Mr. Clinton's also done some wild things and Austin Powers. I believe he's done all three Austin Powers. Maybe he'll do the fourth one whenever it comes out because you know it's coming. Edited by Ned Bastille and Cindy Mallow. Bastille has done Looking for Richard. Have you seen Looking for Richard with Pat Pacino where he's doing like Richard III and it's like it's like a doc docudrama kind of thing? No. Sounds no. like Waiting for Governor. No, 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 no. It's, <laughs> it's not. Uh, he's also done Far City Blues, throw that fucking picks again, and Hardball. <laughs> Cindy Malo has done the Ozark TV show, House of Cards TV show, some of those episodes, Book of Eli and The Sentinel. Do you remember The Sentinel? That's what Michael Douglas and Kiefer Sutherland, he's like the um, Secret Service guy who's... Yeah. yeah. I, now, I remember it. I don't remember anything about it. And I don't even remember if I liked it. I but I remember seeing it. There's one scene on the White House lawn. They talk to each other. I have like, it's like complete, end? this movie came out in like 2000, completely, no, I'm sorry, The Sentinel came out in 2005, completely just blank. I don't remember anything about the movie, but I know I saw it. I mean, like, imagine, like, you know you saw something, but you it's gone. I'm picturing a scene near a shed on the White House lawn. I got nothing for you. And man. that's all I, I got. I got nothing for you. I, I, may, I may have to watch that because I, I don't even know if I like it. Or if I enjoyed it. I remember it was on TV and I watched the whole, I was I like, oh, I watched the whole thing. Don't even know where I saw it. Don't even like this. That's truly forgotten because I've forgotten everything about it. <laughs> it goes on the list. <laughs> produced by Robert F. Newmeyer. Uh, Mr. Newmeyer passed away in 2005, but he also produced Leatherheads, 27 Dresses, and the Santa Claus trilogy. And Jeffrey Silver, uh, responsible for Don't Tell Mom, The Babysitter's Dead, Training Day, Terminator Salvation, Trial and Legacy, which I love, and Edge of Tomorrow, which I also love. Uh, it's produced by a bunch of other people, but these two were listed. A surprising get, amount of people have done big, big good things. Well, you have to understand these big movies get like forty producers, and they just, people true, just yeah. attach onto it, and you know whatever amount of money that they're offering or whatever they're working on, and they get like producer credits, whatever they do. Yeah. You know, they might not give any money, but they might help out in and get, getting an actor to be in the movie, kind of thing. So. Well, I'll get you, Scott Con. But I, uh, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, <laughs> leave, leave Scott Con alone. Um, <laughs> let's get into the cast. David Arquette plays Gordy Boggs or Gordy as he's known as, uh, you may know David from, or Mr. Arquette from the scream franchise. He's also been a never been kissed and bone tomahawk, which I really like. Um, I know him as uh, Courtney Cox's ex-husband. Oh, uh, most first and foremost. All right. I uh, forgot he was in bone tomahawk. Really? I totally forgot that. He pops up every now and again in like smaller roles in like good movies, but he's, I, I don't mind him. He's yeah. going to be in scream five. You see that? Did you I see did that? See they're that, doing yeah. scream five. Yeah. Neff Campbell's rumored. Listen, I actually like all the screams. They're not all the screams. I do. I actually I, listen. I'm not saying they're they're varying levels of what oh, I enjoy but, about yeah. them, but I still like them. The, my the problem is that all four are directed by Wes Craven. Obviously, Wes Craven's passed away, and now you have the fifth one not. So I'm like, mm. Where's some aren't some of the original writers back in on this? Some, one uh, well, Kevin Williamson did the first one, but then Aaron Kruger came in and did. I think he either did the third one or second one or something. So I think there, there's a mix of people that have, are familiar with all that stuff, but. I don't know. It's just not. I don't know. It's not not Wes Craven. So I know it's, it's like a re, It's supposed to be like a reboot quill. Part uh, reboot. Part well, sequel. I would assume. Here's the thing. I I saw that Nev Campbell's rumored to be in it. When I saw that, I'm like, okay, maybe it's gonna be like they're gonna be in it. But when I saw that it was just Arquette in the movie, I started wondering, are they just gonna kill him off in the beginning, and then they're gonna start with a whole new group of people, which I don't like. Welcome to these twelve year olds getting murdered. There's no reason for that. <laughs> don't don't make me get involved with a bunch of other people that I don't even know about. Like the Scream Four is good. And I understand why you have the young cast there, mm-hmm. but you, the old I'm there for the older cast. I'm there for the originals. Well, it's like some of the final destinations that bring back the older cast. This is true. We've we've, we've gone, gone off. off we have gone off the rails. <laughs> that's fine, though, because we I, haven't I, done, I we haven't done a, a we, side like this. I think we should time. go off the rails more often. I think that <laughs> helps. But we're here to talk about Ready to Rumble. And that also stars Scott Kahn as Sean Dawkins. <laughs> Mr. Kahn's in the Osha trilogy. He's also in the Hawaii Five O TV show and Boiler Room. Do you like Boiler Room? That's the Vin Diesel one, right? Vin Diesel, Ben Affleck. Like 
Oliver Platt as Jimmy King. He's, you might know Mr. Platt from Lake Placid. Uh, he's also in the Chicago Med TV show, Chef and Bullworth, which I, I love Bullworth. Bullworth is really good. Rose McGowan as Sasha. She's also in the first Scream. She's in Grindhouse, the Planet Terror part of Grindhouse. And she's from the TV show Charmed. I think she came on mid-season for that or mid, mid-show, mid mid-series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joey Pants, Joe Pantolano as Titus Sinclair from Memento. Great movie, The Matrix. I don't know if you've heard of that. He's also he won an Emmy for his role in The Sopranos, the TV show, and he's in all the Bad Boys. I was going to say the Bad Boys trilogy, but there's more than four. There are more than three, excuse me. Quadrilogy. They're quite well. There's going to have a fifth one, right? So now it's a saga. Like I, fast I, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Martin Landau, who plays Sal Bandini, Mr. Landau passed away in 2017. He won the Oscar for Ed Wood. He's also North by Northwest, awesome film, and Crimes and Misdemeanors. Richard Linebacker. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa That's whoa. Kurtzwell right there. Okay, yeah, he's in X Files. You're, you're right. He's in the X Files Fight the Future movie. All right, all right, all right, all right. I didn't forget now. Yeah. That's why I have you here, brother, to remind me of that. So yeah, Richard Linebacker is Boggs, his father, Mr. Boggs, Gordy's dad. He's in Natural Born Killers, Twister, and of course, Varsity Blues, throw that fucking pig skin. <laughs> you, have Chris, you have Chris Owen as Isaac. And I'm going to tell you right now, he's only known as the Shermanator from our American Pie. <laughs> but no, but to be fair, I, he's in October Sky, which is an awesome film. And he's in The Mist, which is something I can't ever watch again because it's got such a depressing ending. Carolyn Ray as Eugenia, Eugenia King. She's in the new TV show, Cindy to the Max on Disney. I don't know. Butler's a big fan of that and The Perfect Man. Sure. You had Ahmet Zappa as he was the cashier. I'm only putting him in here because Ahmet is a big time writer, director, producer. He's an actor, but he's more than that. Um, so, you know, I think he is also friends with Arquette. That's probably why he's in there. You had Melanie Paxson as Wendy from Saving Mr. Banks and Deal Breakers TV show. And then I have a bunch of other people here that we can probably get into later. Well, I'm, I'm not going to give you all the list of there are like 40 wrestlers in this movie. It's just peppered with them. Yep. The, re- the main wrestlers that actually have speaking parts are, I guess... You get to know our Goldberg, which is obviously Bill Goldberg, Diamond Dallas Page, known as his real name is Dallas Page. And then you have Steve Borden, who plays Stink. Sting is one line. Um, you know, Goldberg's been in like, he was in The Longest Yard, the Sandler remake. Um, if you have not seen the Burt Reynolds movie, you should because it's awesome. The uh, Sandler remake's okay. Uh, and he was also in The Universal Soldier, The Return. And then Dallas Page was in The Devil's Rejects. I don't know if you knew that. He's in that. Is he in that? Yeah. I probably well, wouldn't. I, I mean, recorded to this, he is. I don't really know him. as I'm not, not a huge wrestling guy, right. so I don't really know him. Well, you have a ton of other people. Like, you have Bam Bam Bigelow in this. You have um, Gorgeous George, Kurt Henning, all these people. Uh, Macho Man Savage is in this movie in the beginning. Randy, yeah. Platt slaps him for real and all that stuff. Randy! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes. So, you, I think, honestly, you're... I, where you fall on this movie probably also mimics where you fall on your idea of wrestling in terms of what you like about wrestling. If you For don't sure, like wrestling, yeah. um, re- why don't you go real quick on your before we get into the movie? Because this is only fair. Your background in terms of your relation to wrestling and as a kid and to now. So I've never been a big fan of wrestling. I never really I, I grew up with friends who really liked it. Uh, a couple of my friends would always watch it. I remember I had I, there were a couple of birthday parties I had where we we're hanging out at my house and like a fight was on and like I had to watch wrestling and it's just or their house and they all had the action figures and stuff like that. And as a kid, it was like, I don't really care. I mean, it's all fake. Yeah, I guess so like I never really enjoyed it. I always thought it was a little ridiculous. They were all wearing spandex. And <laughs> all right. Not really that big in it. As I grew up, I kind of started to appreciate maybe the theatrics of it a little bit more. I think you get it. You definitely, definitely. Um, but I, I'm still not a huge fan, but I do appreciate what they do. And as I grew up, I learned while it is fake, they are still taking some hits and they're falling off these things and and doing a lot of stunts for the audience. And and they're creating their own characters. Well, just put it in relation to you hanging out with your brothers when you're younger and you guys are play fighting. Sometimes you get hurt. You know exactly, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I. I when I was, I was old enough to be there for like WrestleMania one, two, three, like, like, you know, all that stuff and Hogan and, and under the giant just, so I was into it. I'd go over to my, uh, the neighbor's house and we'd, cause they had the pay-per-view event. We'd watch WrestleMania and get into that. And, and then as I got older, I realized that cause back then I thought it was like, Oh, you heard people like allude to maybe it wasn't real, mm-hmm. but you didn't think so when you were younger, you were into that. I was into that. I mean, excuse me. So as I got older, I realized that, wait a minute, this is not real. This is bogus. And yeah. then that kind of soured me on it because I am kind of a, I do like authenticity in terms of certain things. 
But now I, th- I think at some point I don't and I may be wrong because I'm not a what's the word I'm looking for here? Aficionado. Yeah, I'm not somebody who know, I'm not a historian in terms of wrestling, in terms okay. of how it goes. Yeah. But it, it seemed at some point like they were going on the facade that it was real. But then at some point they realized that we're entertainment. You know what I mean? It's not just about right. pretending that we're beating the crap out of each other. Let's embrace the fact that we're entertainment. And then you had this swell of just, yeah, okay, it may be fake, but like, we're not, that's not what we're here to do. We're here to entertain you. Right. And so I, I, I like you said, you, you kind of, there is a level of respect there that, that when you're watching a movie, your actors or performers that what they're doing is understandable. And, but, but when you also understand like what they're doing in terms of they're traveling every day of the week, they're in a different place doing the same thing over and over again. Like that's a toll. I'm sorry, but like, there's nothing it's, you know, people like you, you look like people like Dwayne Johnson, even Goldberg, John Cena, all these people that have graduated beyond wrestling to develop careers. Right. But there are hundreds and thousands of people that did not do that. And they're toiling away doing this, like almost like, you know, ungrateful work of just, you know, this new city every night, you know, playing this, right. you know, it, so it, it takes a toll. And I, there's, I have much respect for that. Like We're, the undertaker who's been around for seriously something. Years. I mean, I get that. And I, and I won't put, and I don't, I'm not going to poo poo anybody that's into wrestling. I, I, you know, that's great. I mean, that's something you're into. I right. will say this though. There are people that are really rabid about it and I don't understand that. Yeah. That, but that's I don't fine. That. I don't I, get the people that get really excited when somebody wins or loses. Yeah. Like, Oh, I can't believe he lost. It's, it's scripted, man. Yeah, he was scripted I, to lose. There's uh, no, the drama there is all for your seriously benefit. That, there's a storyline, and, and and that's again, that's not. A, I'm not. I just don't get it. Uh, but that's fine. If it, that being said, the best part about this movie is the wrestling stuff. Absolutely. If you, I had a comment here that if you just if you maybe didn't uh, a little beginning and the little end, and then you just had the steel cage match at the end, like if it was like a thirty minute short. Mm-hmm. This would probably be really w- well received because that's the best part be, about yeah. it. The one thing, the one note I have, to be honest, when I watched this movie when it first came out, I was younger and that was around the time I w- really didn't like wrestling. So I remember watching this movie on TV on like HBO or something that came out and going, it's not that great. Mm-hmm. I have my own opinions of it now. There were a few parts I actually found myself laughing at and enjoying. And one of the things I enjoyed the most, which my notice here is that all the main characters love of wrestling and, and even their town of uh, Lusk. Everybody loves wrestling so much and it's their love of wrestling is infectious in this film. Mm -hmm. And it it really makes you appreciate wrestling while you're watching this film. Sure. It's it's definitely good or bad. A love letter to wrestling. Well, I have a note here that and I don't know if this is true or not, because who knows? Um, A lot of times when you get notes on the Internet, I'll I'll read one note. I'm like, oh, interesting. Like what this what certain things are based on. And then I'll I'll, I'll go a couple of notes down and like it's a complete. Uh, no, 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 this was based on this. And it's just like, well, then I'm not, then none of that's going oh, on. Oh, I got, yeah, the yeah. two, what their storylines. Yeah, I, so like the storyline of like the betrayal of Jimmy the King. Jimmy the King or Jimmy King? Jimmy King, Was yeah. it Jimmy the King? It was Jimmy King is his name and then Jimmy the King was okay. his wrestling title. Right. Um, that The purpose of this movie was to regain WCW's fan base. Mm-hmm. I guess they were losing a lot of fans, but they were bought by the WWE like I guess a year later after this movie. Yep. But, but here, here's the thing where like, because I don't know wrestling. I don't know, because some of these people I know they're all from the WCW, but like I could swear that some of them were WWE or before that WWF. So I don't know. Or because a lot of them went back over. I think a lot they of them go back went and back forth. over. Like I think Sting was definitely WWF back in the day with F. And then he went to. I, I was then looking at the, WCW. There's like I think one he came back TNA. I mean, like, again, we are not. I know we, sometimes we, we don't know. Go, but yeah. yeah. So even the note of like this movie was made to get that fan base, that could be true, could be not true. I don't know. But that's the note I had. So I'm going to throw that out there. Um, it makes sense why they would make the movie to kind of bring people in. That makes sense. I yeah. think if they really wanted to bring the fan base in, getting a wrestler, like an actual wrestler, and having them help that wrestler would help more than having, you know, Oliver Platt as a character. Maybe having, you know, your Goldbergs, quote unquote, someone who can kind of act a little bit and be right. in the movie, be the character that they're trying to help get back in the ring. Right. There's, 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 Three people that stand out to me in this movie. That's Platt. I like Oliver Platt. I think Oliver he's funny. Really good. Um, Martin Landau. He's great. <laughs> he's great. And then Joe Pantoliano. Hey, you want to wrestle? <laughs> yeah, no. He's actually, he actually, Jack Palance was supposed to be that role. I read that, yep. And I can see that because I've seen Palance as Curly. 
So I get that. I would, I, you kind of get a sense of how it's going to be, but Landau's funny. Um, but yeah, and then Joe Pantoliano, who I like in a lot of stuff. That wig, though. Oof. But that's fine. I don't care. He's <laughs> Look just... at the wig. I'm like, as soon as he walks in with it, I'm like, I can see the hairline. I can see where the end of the wig ends. It's 2000s, man. It's the odds. Those three people I thought stood out. They were funny. They were. They had a lot of good scenes, good lines, especially Pantoliano. I mean, he, had, he gets kicked a bunch of times. You know. So while I enjoy Arquette and Khan in this movie, some of their jokes don't land. Some of their jokes are a little flat for me. Uh, um, yeah. They're not funny. I mean, when he when Arquette goes and I don't know how you feel about this, but when Arquette goes to get the slushy renewed, and he sticks his finger in his butt. All I kept thinking was mall rats because it was five years earlier and Brody does the same thing. Oh, does he? he I haven't you've seen never mall seen mall rats. I've seen it, but I haven't seen it. In so so long. I remember that scene in Dumb and Dumber. Er, OK, which came out after this. And I'm like, Dumb and Dumber. Er, yeah. Did this like. They stole it from this movie. Well, but now this in, movie stole in, it from Mall Rats. Ma- well, I mean, it could just be like it was a good idea, but in Mall Rats, Michael Rooker plays the father of the girl that Jeremy London's trying to get with, or J- Jason London. I can't wait to remember London's in this in that. It's been so long ago. And to get rid of him, he he basically sticks his hand in his pants and gets them all over the chocolate pretzels and he gives it to Michael Rooker and Rooker eats him and then Rooker mm. gets sick and so that he he's out of the picture kind of thing. But yeah. So I mean, don't remember that scene. Yeah, you don't remember that? <laughs> Uh, it's been a long, long time since I've seen it. Well, he's doing another one, so you might want to watch it again. He's doing, he wrote another Mall Rats. When he gets to it, I'll watch it. But yeah, so I always remember that. So I don't know. I mean, not that that's a knock against what he does in this one, but I just remember, you know, that kind of stuff. So I, I, a lot of the Arquette stuff, <laughs> I don't know. It's tough. We've talked about this before. When you're watching a comedy, you have to just kind of understand that it's a comedy they're doing stuff for comedians that like eating uh, next to the sewage pipe that's at, that's unloading when i talk about what it smells like <laughs> yeah it kind of smells like french toast what yeah. french toast covered in shit maybe <laughs> yeah it's stuff like that you know like driving to driving to the show in the truck Sanitation but truck. not emptying the truck out like stuff like that you know it's there for you're doing it for a joke i didn't understand their personalities always seem to shift between somewhat realistic and like farley brothers level comedy from them kind of like joking around being goofy but being like just kind of losers but lovable losers to being so dumb when he says uh or buenos nachos oh, i didn't know you speak spanish oh yeah yeah i took it in high school a bunch of times are you fluent and then he takes his temperature i don't think so oh yeah it's like what that's the, that's that's a level of dumb that you weren't like five minutes ago now yeah. you're that level of dumb well that's the pro that's the that's the balance in a comedy where you like a movie like Wedding Crashers is great because in a movie like Wedding Crashers, you liked Wedding Crashers right? yeah. before I go. You in a movie like Wedding Crashers, you have to root for the two main guys. You have to at some point make service in the script to creating scenes where the comedy's there to endear yourself to those people so that when they get the girl, quote unquote, moving forward, that you are you want that to happen. Right. So you 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 have to make them funny. But you have to make them relatable and in some way. In this movie, you're going, you're falling far on the comedy side. You're trying to make people laugh, think stupid humor, all this, this, but this, that, and the other thing. And that's fine if that's what you want to do, but you can't really try to do the other side of it where you give Scott Kahn the love interest of Wendy, Sean's character, and then you want to be like, oh, like, you know what I mean? Or right. Gordy is more about trying to become a wrestler, but you really don't have that a lot of that. And no, his stuff with his father is shooting at the uh, refrigerator and f- pulling their weapons on him when he walks into it. it that stuff doesn't that stuff doesn't do that. So you that that stuff. So when you have that endearing moment of where I already got my tag team partner, partner, you really don't care. No, and you never really got that either. Sean or Gordy were trying to be wrestlers at the beginning of the film. That's what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, but then you just get they just want their hope back. They just right. want Jimmy King to be back as as a superstar. I thought the main crux of the story and the script and in terms of what they were trying to say is when they were beating the crap out of Titus Sinclair and he was like, the fans make wrestling. You don't make yeah, wrestling. Exactly. That yep. was the whole thing. Yep. That was, And that's fine. That That is true. That's great. But that needed to be expanded upon throughout the entire movie, not just let's do silly, stupid fart gags and and sicko gags and raunchy humor. You can have all that, but you still need to find that. You need to that, throw your theme in there. Somewhere. Right. Yeah. You still need to focus on that. That's that's what takes a movie um, from, you know, a C level movie to a B or A level movie in terms of you still have to put that heart in there. You can't discount it. 
Now, that being said, maybe that's not what they wanted to do. They wanted to have a, a fun movie. They wanted to pump up the wrestling. They wanted it to just be like, you know, kind of like off the wall and zany and hopeless. And that's fine. That doesn't work well for you. Not at all. I, and like you're supposed to be t- learning a lesson. The whole movie is learning a lesson, learning a lesson. Every character supposed to go and learn their thing, even if it kind of shoehorned in like Gordy's police thing and, and absolutely Sean's love interest thing. Yeah. And then you get Jimmy King. The crux of the story, other than the love of wrestling, is him learning that the fans love him and he's built by the fans. And at the end, Diamond Dallas is like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this for? Like, what's what, what's keeping you going? And he's like, what are you doing this for? Me. And yeah. He's doing it for himself. And I was like waiting for the shooter drop and him to get beat up. And then he comes back up and goes, I'm doing it for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that never happens. No. So like, what does he learn? He learns nothing. There's no, no real lesson in his storyline. Although at the end, then he goes, I found my tag team gets Gordy back. But never mind the fact that his son just betrayed him. Yeah, that's ignored. Uh, and, Although apparently that's based on an actual wrestling event but, as well. Exactly. And it's like, yeah, I don't understand that. whole And his whole turn of caring about Gordy just comes out of nowhere as well. Yes, yes. He goes from not wanting to do the fight, not wanting to do the fight. Going back to Lusk to learn how to train. Mm-hmm. And then Gordy leaves. And now all of a sudden he's like, no, Gordy, come on. I need you, man. I need you, man. Yeah. You were looking to get out of this any way you could two seconds ago. You could make a case that you should have had something where Gordy's father is not likable. And, you know, he he's doesn't get likeable. along with it. He's not you, <laughs> but, you know, like, because at the end they try to like, yeah, that's my boy. But yeah. Um, so where, and then you have, a, and you make Oliver Platt, his father figure, and then have them come together. That's great. But that's not, that's not the type of movie they wanted to do here. So, and let, and you brought up, you brought up Wendy and I talked to her about it before. And, uh, we talked about Rose McGowan in this movie who she hated being in this movie. Yeah, she threw out the script three times. Yeah. She didn't, she didn't want to be in. The, and, and what's funny is that there's this in the, did you watch the outtakes? The stupid thing that rolls in the credits. But did you notice the one where he's yeah he's just laughing he's, and she's and like you can see her face yeah. and she's pissed off and I'm just like ooh she doesn't like this and I think because he's staring at her boobs I think that's what he's doing yeah he's like I can't stop staring it's like oh boy yeah that would not make the cut in the no 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 but um they're the, the like the female character in this movie why are they in this movie like they're, there's they're, they're, they're exactly it's it's such a disservice you, you could have done more uh, you know, this is just once again another movie that's male centric and and just uninteresting in terms of I can this movie deserves any kind of criticism it gets in terms of its female roles oh, because yeah. it's just it completely just you dismissive the, and uh, abusive. Oh, no. The what? Oklahoma singer. No, no, no. Tell me. So apparently there's a deleted scene okay. where the after the guy who's singing for the musical rendition for Oklahoma, they cut to him being tied to a tree as they drive off. Oh, geez. So they cut it because they feared that that was like violence toward get, for well, uh, it, the it, gay community. It, it was. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that that tracks. I mean, it it make that's fine if you in the movie have them get their comeuppance for that act or like how that's stupid. But yeah. it's just it's completely like again, it's yeah, we're gonna make fun. Oh, that's hilarious. Let's do that. Oh, that's hilarious. Let's do that. It's like why? It's I'm not saying it needs to be politically correct. But if you're going to have people do stuff like that, you can have people do like stuff like that in the movie. But those people need to be, you know, Total shown to be yeah. idiots. And 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 let's be honest. These guys are idiots. They're oh, idiots. Absolutely. And, you know, we're, just because the, it works out for them at the end doesn't mean that they're not going to still go on and do idiotic things. We're kind of hating on this movie. I, I don't want to hate on this movie because I, I like the wrestling stuff. I enjoy the match at the end. I enjoy when. Um, the bike he drives the bike and the ridiculous Smash jump and that that's yeah and like I mean he, he he took out this the kid with the bike did you notice that yeah yeah um that stuff I I don't mind that stuff even even Roger Ebert said that the movie worked best when it focused on the wrestling because I actually liked when Diamond Dallas Page turns the tables on him and they're fighting the wrestling and you and they're talking he's like all right I'm gonna do like and like they're actually telling the moves that they're doing oh at the very beginning I yeah. thought that stuff was awesome because I was like yeah that that's pretty cool. Nice take though. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Well, like it goes down to him. Like I can see that. And I wanted more of I honestly wanted more of that, but that's not the type of movie. Um I liked that Jimmy King, because when I first uh started watching it, because I didn't I don't really remember this movie well at all. It came out twenty years ago. I was oh. like twelve when this came out. Oh, you're old. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't remember anything about Jimmy King really. And uh I'm watching, I'm going, oh, he's gonna be a terrible wrestler in real life. And, you know, when they're not, when they're actually, when he's actually got to fight and get down dirt, he actually can defend himself. He's not such a loser that he has no skill at all, which I enjoyed because. Oh, you, you mean like, like an actor and having no skill? Right. I was, okay. I was right. waiting for him to be a stupid washed up trailer guy, which he, he kind of is, mm-hmm. but he's not, but who can't really hold his own. 
without you know the fake wrestling scripts mm-hmm. and stuff like that so seeing that how he could actually defend himself and you know he does put a little bit of a fight against diamond dallas mm-hmm. in the, even in the beginning beginning the beginning <laughs> <laughs> and then when he's in the trailer and they're gordy and john are like hit us come on come on crown cool. us and he, oh, beats right. the, he just beats the shit up in the trailer i'm just like that's pretty funny. I like I liked that part. I liked when Sting hits them and he's like, do me, do me. Oh, yeah. And he hits yeah. Max him. Well, Jimmy King like seems like somebody who's of like an like from the 80s. So he, he has that blend of old school wrestling kind of vibe with new school. Like now wrestling now is everyone's cut. Everyone's, a, a, you know, a fit athlete. Oh, yeah. But like I remember going to I went to when New Haven Coliseum was still around. I went and saw. Uh, when the w was wwf at that time came to new haven coliseum i actually watched it so i remember like um bruno, uh, bruno santini who uh was iron man barry o was there barry o was there do you remember do you remember he used to be like God, I remember. he used to go he's his whole thing he was one of the guys that always lost he was like a bad guy he was like a heel but he would always be like barry oh and he put his he put his hands over like <laughs> yeah it, it was dumb but like i remind my favorite thing was i always tell the story is i Coco Beware was there and he was like this. He would, his thing was like, he was, he had like these like feathers and stuff and he would jump off the turn. He would fly and kind of thing. And his, he had a manager, his manager was slick. So slick. So he'd come out and then slick would be right behind him. And he was like, he did wear a suit and he's like his hands up and he's at a cane. I think he had a cane. And I remember he was walking to so they're walking in to the ring and he's like, Coco be weird. His man is just slick. It's slick as walking. And oh, somebody, somebody threw a full bag of Fritos and it smacked slick right in the chest and exploded. And he just kept moving. I'm like, he got hit with Fritos and he kept <laughs> moving. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> Good for you, slick. I just remember that. I always remember that. Uh, so I did go to a wrestling match. I actually went to the Coliseum. I don't know if, I, if my father took me. I don't know who I went with. There was father or friend of somebody. But yes. Look at you. I know, right? I actually, I, I told, I just remembered that that I went. <laughs> um. So I guess what what else uh, do you have? Anything else about the movie that you enjoyed that we haven't brought up, or maybe, or no? Is that it? <laughs> did I you, mean, we've already said that we both like Sal. I think Sal is really good. funny. Yep. Uh, did you like the old lady from the wedding singer in this I movie? Did. Dancing in her, in her uh, leather pants <laughs> when he's winning. Ah, uh, yeah. Do you know that she taught drama and dance for thirty years? before like starting like she would teach people but she didn't do it herself. she never and that's and then she started auditioning and, and you know she passed away uh about five years ago but um yeah so she was like had a full-on career of teaching drama and dance before doing you know the movies and stuff like that good for her i mean yeah so i mean go you know congrats there are a couple of funny parts that i like i like some of the jokes i like uh caroline caroline ray when she comes out and she says uh you boys ever see crabs up close? <laughs> he wants to see. You want to? Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like Scott, uh, Sean has to be like, no, no, no. I, I, I can't handle this. <laughs> and I love when Jimmy goes back to the house to meet Caroline and his son. He goes, I'm going to win that million dollars. And I'm going to get that boy the best. <laughs> I, I kept thinking that. I kept watching it. And I'm like, is that Danny McBride? And like, it was like a good five minutes. I'm like, no, that's not Danny McBride. Is that Danny McBride? That's not Danny McBride. And then I, I looked it up and it wasn't. <laughs> and then when they're uh, when he's in the trailer and they're talking to him, yeah, we went to your wife. Your, my wife, bless her soul. Yeah, we went to her, your wife's house. And yeah, she was pretty alive. <laughs> your parents aren't dead either. <laughs> <laughs> but they're still so in on like loving him that they're like they don't care that he's a he's a big fat phony. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Oh, my favorite was the blatant product placement when he's like, I'm going to go get a Butterfinger. Yeah, I like them. Like, oh, yeah. Like, uh, just like, why don't you just say, I'm going to go get a product placement. I'm going to get our product placement for this. <laughs> I'm, I like No, that. and I everybody mean, put a finger <laughs> on my Butterfinger. Well, I mean, I actually like Butterfinger, so that's, that's fine. I haven't had a Butterfinger in forever, though. Uh, you're betraying the uh, legacy of Bart Simpson. <laughs> I would have, I mean, honestly, I was surprised that this movie wasn't in the 90s because they not had one, but two times did we hear lit. I was going to say, it lit popped up twice. I was like, wait, I already heard this. Yeah, I was like, oh, it must like be a song, 90s but... movie. I'm like, wait a minute, this is 2000. <laughs> yeah, the soundtrack wasn't bad. It was like a early 2000s yeah, rock was... anthem kind of. I, I wonder, like, I'm sure this movie was written. Obviously, this probably movie was written pretty close to when they made it, but it's definitely like rooted in the 90s. It's definitely like a 90s film. Oh, yeah. 
um, and with the music and just the 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 comedy style because you had American Pie that came out. Obviously, you talked about that, and uh, you had a bunch of these raunchy comedies that came out. So it's almost it was almost like when it came out, the executives were probably watching it going, "All right, well, I guess the '90s raunch fest is over, right, guys? Okay, let's get into some room. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, almost like you know that, that's what they felt like when they saw it all. Uh, <laughs> I love the guys that come out of the. I love the dudes that come out of the porta potties and like rip on them because they they're septic workers. Yeah. And I want to be like, you know, that's that's big money, right? You you know that nobody wants to do the job. That's why they get paid a lot of money to do that job. Yep. So if you own a septic, you know, you know, if you're if you're a septic worker, you're making good bank. I mean, you got to deal with shit, obviously, but yeah. You're making good bank. So I don't want to be like, why are you laughing? He's making are... more than you probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're pissing it away, apparently. But yeah, no, I'm no, not saying crap. <laughs> He's probably making more as a septic worker than he was going to be at a, uh, as a cop. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the other thing is like, that's part of the movie that starts to drag down for me is when they start leaving the wrestling match. I do like when they're crying and they're like these allergies. Yeah, these no. <laughs> Stupid Sinclair allergies. <laughs> These stupid Sinclair Jimmy King losing allergies. <laughs> uh, but like them tipping over the truck was just like, ah, that's so dumb. Again, yeah, that's yeah. like now you're dumber, dumber territory. And then you, what, you go back there just to do the TP gag. Yeah, the TP gag is just like, wait, what? And we're really cool. Everyone's really cool with getting shit all over them. Really like, yeah, it's like, oh, man. I was like, uh, you guys are just going to get ill. Womp, womp. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> and then we have to do like this 15 minute segment where they're going to Atlanta. Like, I didn't need that. Just get to Atlanta. <laughs> I didn't need the nuns in the van singing the song. I knew that was going to happen. Uh, I meant to look this up. But like, are, are we at a point now where getting picked up by nuns on your way on a road trip? That's no, a, trope? a cliche and a trope now because it's it's in like almost. Every movie. You got to go on the trope site where they, they I, trope. Yeah. I wanted to look it up and I didn't because I just, I'm like, we're, we're over this, right? We're like, you get in the van with nuns and it's, oh my God, they're nuns. We need, and then it's not. And you know, they're cool. And it's like, we've, we've done this enough already. Running with the devil. I get it. Uh, like it's, it, we're done with this, right? Did we can stop. Fart? No. Did you fart? Oh, yeah. Fart Give me a break. Nuns. Why was that funny? No, it's, it's not. It's not. <laughs> like, come on. Uh, it's absolutely uh, not funny at all. Or like, what What was the line when he tells, when Sinclair tells Sting, is that when he tells him, like, I will kill you if you fuck this up? Does he tell him that? Yeah. And I'm like, really? You're going to, you're going to murder him? This guy's bigger than you. And you really think he, that's my little wrestler cronies murder you. Yeah. Uh, really? That's happening? Really? The other thing that made me, well, it's a movie, so I can't really give them too hard is like, you know, they travel to three different arenas, including Madison Square Garden. And yeah. they all look the same. <laughs> <laughs> They're obviously on one set, which is fine. But like you're at MSG. It, I think people know what MSG looks like. It's uh, quite a bit bigger. than <laughs> the show. Yeah. So I, I, I was just mm, come on. And I one of the things I forgot was that they spent a lot of time in New York. You know, quote unquote, in New York. Yeah. Clearly, I mean, they're at a party. We're like, oh, party at his trailer. Uh, so so they're his trailer home is underneath. Uh, an, an overpass apparently which you're not allowed to do also he's in New York because there's a New York City cab parked right there so he must be in New York I like yeah. I, lo I love that stuff see that yellow thing right there yeah, New York. yeah. I, I mean it's a move it's movie making and that's fine it's just it's funny because I like pointing it out but um he should have died when he fell in the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, yeah, I didn't get that. I was really hoping that I thought that would have been a nice turn for the movie like I liked his character but I was like when he falls down in the sewer van, I was like all right, now they have to fight in his place because he's dead, right? Because that's how it's going to be. That would have been an interesting dark twist of the movie. Let's also talk about how awful that arcade game looked when he, the, uh, when the Shermanator's playing the arcade game. Like, that's that's a terrible... Even 2000s. That's, just that's a terrible game. arcade game. And just, you approve that? <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have just put that, put a, a Jimmy King sprite in like an old wrestling game mm -hmm. and just... Uh, do you think Mean Gene Oakland was in on the betrayal? Do you think he knew that the betrayal was happening? He didn't seem like he did. No, I don't think he did. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they did more with Mean Gene. Mean Gene's a, a notable figure in wrestling. Yeah. And I, I, you almost want, I wish they did a, like a little more with him. Maybe just like, you know, Sinclair and him, just something. Just, Again, a little bit more with the wrestlers would have been, I, been good. I, I think if you were more wrestling focused, you, you there would have been a lot more interest in this movie. I'm sure a lot of people, and I, I'm pretty sure that uh, DiCarlo, Mr. DiCarlo is, uh, or Joey DiCarlo, I don't know, 
is a, a fan of wrestling. So that's probably why I chose this. But I would think a lot of people were into this movie because of the wrestlers. It was it was fun to see the wrestlers. So do more of that. I even mean, back even back when I wasn't into wrestling as, as a younger kid, I would have been more into it if it was more wrestler focused because right. it would have been a more over the top fun time. I think the movie falls short when you're away from the ring. Let's put it that way. Even the, even the ring when they're training, it falls short when you're away from the away from that. Right. You know, yeah. even when you go see Sal Bandini, that stuff's good. And because they do like the untouchable style, you know, when he, uh, they're going to go get him or whatever they're going to do to him and he, and he gets them. Yeah, I, I think it it falls short when they're away from the ring. And that's probably that's probably my biggest thing about the movie. I know I probably like it more than you do because I give the wrestling more of a of a thumbs up. Oh, I hate doing that, but I give wrestling more of a, <laughs> hey, you know, hey, it's, no, I, I enjoy that. I enjoyed the, the wrestling stuff was fun. And most of the jokes that work come from the jokes that happen in the ring or near the ring. Right. A- any of the jokes that are the travel, the buddy comedy travel stuff. Right. I've seen movies that do it better. I've seen less doofy movies do it better. And then right, I've right. seen other movies like then it tries to, when it tries to go into fairly territory. Oh, fairly brothers. Yeah. I gotcha. Gotcha. Like, there's so much me, myself and Irene I see in this and dumb and dumber I see in this. And both of those movies are are infinitely superior because those movies because of that. But that's do the endearing. The, yeah. The, but that's yes. there's endearing. The characters are better. And that's what you're focused on. And these characters aren't endearing. They're in the endearing quality is their love of wrestling, which you see and comes out, like right. you said, in the ring or training. There's Fair, too much yeah. not in there. Fairly Brothers are probably the with the except probably the guys that did American Pie, too. But the Fairly Brothers are really good at doing raunchy and sentimental and endearing and 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 stu- and blending it because you because that's what makes you root for those people. You, you Jim Carrey is hilarious in me myself and Irene and he's great when he's, you know, obviously um I can't remember his alter ego. Yeah, name. his alter ego. <laughs> but you should get a bun in the oven and sourdough. Okay. <laughs> um but like he's great, but yeah. like you still Charlie is the is the not the first is this uh, his main guy. Yeah. And but, Charlie is a nice endearing guy. You right. want to root for and Charlie. you're into that. And you're you want him to, you know, even stuck on you with Matt Damon and Greg Kinnear. You know, you were there's emotion there between those two. Yep. Granted, you have two good actors there, but that's the thing. And Carrie's a good actor too. That's the thing. Like, you know, they're good at mixing that. And, and something about Mary is fantastic, but like you need to fall in love with Ben Stiller to 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 get him to get the girl. You yep. want him to win. So you need that. You need to pay homage to all that kind of stuff that we're talking about. This movie does not do that, and a lot of movies. To be fair, a lot of movies don't do that. Yes. So you can do the raunchy. You can do both. You just have to know how to do both. And for some, for unfortunately, Ready to Rumble stumbled there. But I will say this: I don't think that was its focus. I think its focus was the wrestling. I think, it, like we talked about, it was made. For wrestling fans then they need to they needed to make it more like that You're, yeah i got you 49 minutes in i'm looking at i'm like i'm like we got to be close to the end because now he's already in the <laughs> ring about to fight 49 minutes in he's in the porta jamie uh jimmy king is in the porta potty ready to fight sinclair right right and i'm like all right this must be the end all right now he's gonna fight tomorrow in this big and i open it i i pause to go to the, the bathroom and i'm like wait i'm only half i'm a little less than halfway through there's still 54 minutes left yeah there's barely been drags. any wrestling right now yeah it's, and it's in, like they're still not. It's in 107 minutes and it probably needed to be like 90, you know, or cut out some of that travel stuff, put in one more match in between. Well, you, you also, yeah, you also had the Sasha stuff, which like she's clearly a double agent like, right. right from the start. And like, and she's clearly coming on to him and he's so stupid that he doesn't get it. Whatever. Show me your moves. And then he punches <sighs> her. Yeah. I did like four on objects. <laughs> But uh, but they they wrap that up super quick. I that I kind of like that because I I don't like when it's played out for too long and because right. it's such that's also such a trope. And this wraps it up so quick and he does figure it out. But again, is he an absolute moron or is he clever and and smart enough to realize what's going on in the world? He can't make that stupid nacho joke and that stupid fluent thing, but also be smart enough to overhear that conversation and understand exactly that he got duped. Yeah, he's got to be super dupable. Or super dupable, <laughs> super dupable. That's a new word. Yeah. Are, are you super dupable? Uh, I'm dumb enough not to say gullible. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 a lot of the, a lot of the Gordy stuff, and and I also like David Arquette, but it's just I just it's too think much. His, his character is too topsy to like like he doesn't know where he is. He's over the top at like. 80% and he needs to be like at 40. I got you. Yeah, and then he it's decides all of a sudden I'm going to be a cop, guys. Yeah. And that turn comes out of nowhere. You were just like, 
we're going to do whatever it takes. You dump Sasha. You're like, no, we're going back to basics. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm going to have to be a cop. Yeah. That that turn comes almost out of nowhere as much as Jimmy wanting him to come back because of that. For those who don't know, in comedies, usually you have, they call one guy's a straight guy or a straight person or a straight, straight girl. It's a person who doesn't, isn't the jokey. When I say straight, I mean like they're not always the zany person. They're, mm -hmm. the, they're, the, they're the quote unquote audience. They're the people that have to react to the zaniness. And there's always one person like that. In this movie, you have two people that are not that. You have you have almost Scott Conn's a little bit more Sean's sensible. More with it. Yeah. So you might want it. You might want he should be the lead. And Arquette's character, Gordy, should be the zany one. But unfortunately, they have situated in this movie where Gordy's more of the straight. They're trying to make him more of the straight guy, the lead, the person that's not supposed to be jokey. But he is. And that's the way they positioned it in terms of the writing. See, I didn't feel that he was the straight guy, though. No, I did I, feel he was the lead. No, I got you. But that's what I'm saying. He's like, got no moments of that. He's supposed he's the lead. So he's supposed to be he should be the straight guy. And he's not. So he's in, so, but they've, that's the way they've written. So it's, you're right. It should have been reversed. I'm okay with a Don Quixote situation where Sean's just kind of following this crazy guy in his dream, but Sean's got too many moments of zaniness as well. Got uh, too many moments of zaniness as well. He's at one moment. Let's just go. No, he's not J Jimmy King. He's Jimmy the King. He's Jimmy King, a guy in a dress in a trailer, a drunk, but drunk in this trailer. And like, then he goes back and he's like, no, yeah, I totally believe. But you're not supposed to relate to Don Quixote in that you're supposed to relate to Poncho. Right. So you're supposed to relate to Sean in this and you don't because they don't give Sean enough. Like, exactly, I'm sorry, yeah. but it's a it's a bullshit love interest toss in for Wendy. Yes. Uh, he, he It's so ridiculous. Like he doesn't he has no. There are no uh, extra moments. With he has her. no legitimate conversation with her. And her gift to him is sex. I mean, give me a break. Give me a break. I'm sorry, but that's just stupid. That's stupid and just like, ooh, so what? I mean, ugh, that annoyed me. But you got to see some Scott Conn butt. That's fine. I mean, what? Like, I haven't seen a butt before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, congratulations. You're making your dad proud. <laughs> and I, 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 I'm in a movie's dad. But I, butt? Listen, I like Scott Conn, and I think I really would like to see him. In, I don't watch Hawaii Five-0, so I don't know a lot about that. But I would like to see him in something where he's a little bit more serious. I think he can do it. Uh, and I, I serious in Hawaii Five O. I don't see it. So yeah. I don't watch it. So, but I, I think he's got. I think he's got those chops, and I'd love to see him in something like that. Something like I'd like to see him in like an indie. The episode we did a while ago, which was Clay Pigeons. Yeah, like I want to see him in something like that. Oh sure, I could. I could definitely see him doing stuff like that. Arquette's. I mean, Arquette's going to be known for Dewey for the rest of his life for for Scream, which is fine. That's a. That's, you know, that's, that's down for something at least. Absolutely, and I like David. I like both these actors. I just think that. The, the some of the choices are and some of the writing choices and in, in terms of character just are just off a little and it makes mm -hmm. you kind of recognize the warts more if that's fair sure yeah so i mean we we liked it but you know we're not gonna sit here and tell you it's you know citizen kane no i would say i would go as far as to say i don't think it's a very good movie but I think it's enjoyable. I think there are parts of it that are are decent. I think if you like wrestling, it's worth watching for the wrestling parts. But you sure. got to know that there's probably 25 to 30 minutes of wrestling in this 107 minute movie. So you're going to get mostly not wrestling. How about this? If you see it on HBO and you stumble upon it in the beginning, you're not going to stay with it. But if you stumble upon it or stars or short time, like 45 minutes in, 15 minutes in. You're going to stay with it because then you're going to get into the wrestling and that's what's going to keep you. The first Jimmy King fight is where I was like, OK, I kind of like this. Right. So I think it depends upon when you discover it on TV <laughs> or when you come into it, because there, it's it meanders throughout the throughout the opening and, and, and so the second if, act. If you switch to the Salmandini parts, you're going to you're yeah. going to keep watching once you get want to wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> it did good, kids. Hold on. I got to hit the wrestling team out of here. <laughs> Oh, my. Always kick him while I'm down. Never expect it. It's the old pasta. Act. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave him a little tap. You kicked him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Martin Landau. You're the 70 year old man. Are you proud of yourself? Have you ever seen Ed Wood? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a good movie. Ed Wood's very good. Yeah. I mean, everyone. He's really good in that movie. I mean, obviously, it's Johnny Depp's film, but Martin Landau, he deserved the Oscar for that. He was good. Really good. That's a long, that's a while ago too. That's like mid nineties, I think. 93. Do you think most people know of Ed Wood or do you think it's a forgotten uh, class? I mean, I would, I would hope they know about Ed Wood. 
people bring up Edward a lot, but that's people that I know that really like film. You know what's funny is mo- our Edward, audience probably doesn't. Here's the like thing Edward. about Edward: like uh, I think people bring it up. Yeah, I saw Edward, but like they've never go back they've to watch it again, it. Like, or they've never actually seen it. Or do you think that people? Li- oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, I've seen Edward. Yeah, well, I love that. Have you seen Edward, or have you seen a poster of Edward? I, I, yes, that movie. It's black and white, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's the poster. <laughs> yeah. You remember when he wears the inquiry sweater? What? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think that's it. Right? Season five over. You ready to crown me? <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Every time I heard that when they said it in the movie, I was like, hmm. So it's crazy. just the last episode <laughs> of the season. Um, we're obviously going to be move, moving on to season six. Not oh. just season six. New album art. Oh, <laughs> light blown. Oh, yeah, you're right. So uh, we're doing a little rebranding over here. <laughs> now, as you know, we record these 10 weeks ahead of time <laughs> and I've already designed them and it's awesome. They look great. They're fantastic. We're going to it's going to be a whole new look this year for. Our, for oh, God's yeah. Cinema. So we hope you like it. We'll probably have some stickers. <laughs> I'm really excited about it. I'm like super excited about it. It's a know. really cool. Album. Thanks, man. It's, it's really nice. I'm glad you liked it. I was really nervous. because We're really geeking out. These people aren't going to care anywhere near as much. I know. <laughs> I don't care. So when I sent it to you and I saw that you're, you're like, oh, you saw you read the tweet. I'm like, does, does he not like it? Does he not? I read the, in the, the, text. the text. Does he not like it? He doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, I, I can't get to get my notifications away, but I'm like talking to somebody. So I don't respond right away. So I don't want to be rude. Yeah. But then I see that it's right. I'm like, he saw that I read it. I, that's like in the back of my mind. Sometimes I'm like, I have to respond. I just, cause I was worried. I'm like, <laughs> he doesn't like it. I don't care. I like it. <laughs> So anyways, you'll see that. <laughs> well, they'll know about it because this this is coming. It'll be on Monday from, from this episode. Yeah. So they're listening to this episode 10 weeks from now. Yeah. But So when you're listening to this, this the following oh, Monday, the right, it'll be out. No, no, no. It'll be out the following Monday. Shut yeah. up. It's coming. <laughs> anyways, thanks, everybody, for suggesting your films. Um, I, you're, you, maybe you're not listening, but, um, you know, we like, you know, there, obviously some of the movies we weren't big fans of like you were, but. Like I said, that doesn't matter. What matters is that you you like it. I'm sure we've picked films that you guys didn't like. Absolutely, and that's fine too. We're like it. This is the I I know some. This is the best thing about movies is that you can talk about them. But at the end of the day, we're all still friends here, man. We're all just we love movies. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I don't understand why we need a day for Star Wars for May the Fourth because every oh, freaking day your mouth. everyone talks about Star Wars. I don't care mouth. about Star Wars. It's May the Fourth. Every day you talk about it. Oh, right, you don't need your own day. 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 The fact that it comes before my birthday is another annoying factor. You just, you just hate that it's like I don't, Indiana I'm, Jones Day. I'm you sorry. Want to make it I'm sorry. Jones day? I'm sorry, but I do not need to hear May the Fourth be with you every time on social media when you every other day everybody just talks about Star Wars. You talk about it all year. Why do you need a day? Anyways, like I said, movies are for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So thanks again. Um, join us next week. Actually, you know what? I was going to tease what we're doing next week, but well, why don't we plug? I, no, no, I was going to go to the plugs. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about what we were up to since it's our final season finale in terms of other things other than podcast or whatever. First go. of all, again, thanks to Joey DiCarlo. Yes. Thank you. And the So Wizard podcast. Yep. Check him out wherever podcasts can be heard. Uh, he's on Instagram, Twitter, uh, on Facebook. Social yep. Go check him out. Thanks. Right. Thanks to Carlo. And uh, again, if your movie wasn't chosen for this audience choice season, I'm sure we'll do another audience choice season down the road. But that doesn't mean that your choice was ignored or deleted. We do do suggestions throughout we the We do seasons. suggestions throughout the seasons. And we have saved every suggestion that we were given beforehand as well. So Absolutely. Your movie still might come up down the road. That being said, next season we haven't done any suggestions. But okay. no, <laughs> next season is us. We need to refresh. <laughs> So, what have you been up to, Mike? I have two other podcasts I do. I've got two player bros I do with my buddy Dave Can. It's about two guys who play way too many video games. Join me and Dave as we talk about the latest video game news, reviews, and previews. And then also, every few episodes, we'll do a deep dive on a video game we love. Usually, it's something newer coming out, but we'll talk about how it was made, what we feel about it, and our opinion on the game. I've also got Crackle and Open that I do with my fiance, Elise. It's about brews, news, and pop culture reviews. We talk about a different craft beer or wine or liquor every episode. We talk a little bit about where it was made, how it was made, what's in it, our tasting notes, and a little bit about the history of that beverage itself, as well as pop culture facts while we're sipping it. So it's like, did, don't you do wine too? You said wine, right? Did you do wine? I did say wine. We've done a couple of wines. So that's what I've got. You can check all those out on social media. You can check it out on Two Player Bros. You can check it out at twoplayerbros.com and wherever you get your podcasts. Nice. Nice. All right. 
What am I doing? I've talked before about the books I've written. I've done uh, two books in the Adam Parker mystery series, Adam Parker and the Radioactive Scout, Adam Parker and the High School Bully. Just imagine Encyclopedia Bound all grown up and not liking what he does. So uh, those are available on Amazon. You can get those. You can search it under Adam Parker or me, Michael Field. Um, I'm actually working on a compilation book right now that I'm almost done with the final story. So there's four stories that take place in this fictional town of Brookville. The story is called Welcome to Brookville. Uh, you should also know that we are, Mike and I are working on an anthology series also called Welcome to Brookville, which will be a fictional narrative type serial podcasting mm-hmm. that'll take place within that town. Different stories that we're, that we're working on. We're hoping to have that out by the end of 2020. Yep. Yeah. You're looking yeah. at me like it's weird. Yeah. No, I 20, thought, yeah. Like yeah. January. Yeah. And the 2020, beginning of 2021, whenever we can, you know, figure that out. Um, but uh, yeah. So, and also... I don't know if it's out at, by now. I don't know when we're putting it out there because everything's been pushed back, obviously, with the state of the world right now. But I will I will pump promote it for the first time. Uh, I've been doing a, I've been recording episodes with a buddy of mine, Patrick Whalen. Uh, and we're doing a, yet another MCU podcast. Can you guess what it's about? It's about DC. No, it's about Pat's a big time comic book guy and I am not. So he wanted to kind of get into the podcasting world and, and break down. He wanted to talk about the Marvel movies. So we took, we've been rewatching all of them from the beginning to the end. We're about nine episodes in now recording wise, but you have not heard them. So like, I don't know when it's coming out, but basically it's just the, the episode breaks out where we talk about the movie a little, we talk about the differences between the movie and the comic, which amounts to me basically pepper and Pat with questions, which is fun because I have no idea what he's talking about. Um, and then the fun, then the final section of the episode, we just kind of like, talk about the movie's role in the entire cinematic universe. Listen, everybody talks about Marvel movies. That's fine. This is just a different take. Mike's been on a bunch of the Mike's uh, big time Captain America guy. So he's been on a couple of the episodes. I have, I have, I have. I don't know when this is coming out. I don't know if it's out, but look for it. I'm sure you'll hear about it. Cause that's all I'll talk about yet another MCU podcast. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's all I got. I mean, I just, uh, you know, keep going on, keep trucking as they say. So that's what we're doing. Um, but right now, uh, you can if the Forgotten Cinema website's up, check it out, ForgottenCinemaPodcast.com. You can check out our merch page. Uh, we're on all the social medias, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Forgotten Cinema. Uh, we're the big purple. Well, no, actually, we are the big purple uh, uh, album art, but uh, that's going to change, people. Yeah, it's still big. Well, the purple's in, be purple. it. purple's in it, but, uh, you know, <laughs> Look but that purple. I've added some other stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, coming uh, soon. It's exciting. I'm really, I'm really happy about this. All right. So, anyways, <laughs> next week to start of season six, we are going to be doing, um, we're doing a little crossover. We're That's doing right. now. We're going to be doing the movie it's called. It's called Synergy. It Mike. is called Synergy. You like that? <laughs> we're going to be doing Terminator: Dark Fate, which came out two year ago, two, 2019. Not yeah, not yeah. even a year ago. One yeah. yeah. Mr. Brother thinks that you've forgotten it, so we're going to talk about it, and Didn't then even realize, and it. then I'm going to be on the Two Player Bros podcast to talk about the game Terminator Resistance. Resistance. Yep, which I have to play, so I need to play that soon. So uh, yeah, so um, you know, two podcasts in one. How you like that? So we're going to be doing Terminator: Dark Fate to start season six next week. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Again, once again, thanks to everybody that suggested a movie this season. Uh, we really enjoyed it, even though if you didn't think we didn't enjoy it, we did. We had fun. I enjoyed not enjoying these. Uh, it was fun. Yeah, listen, <laughs> we liked we liked them. Don't worry. Thanks again. My name is Mike Field. I'm Mike Butler. Man, you got to stop that. <laughs> and this has been Forgotten Cinema. Well, you know now, Mean Gene, when I come in here and I'm going to slap you in the face, I'm going to slap it hard. Can you smell what the field is cooking? That's a different time period. That's what. That's my time period. That's what I know. I'm old. Brother. That's my time period. I know that. I remember Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake, he was not fit.